In this video, you're going to learn how to solve triangles involving the ambiguous case, the side-side angle case, and specifically I'm going to show you a problem where there's two triangles possible and how to solve those triangles. But first, I want to show you how do you even identify if there's one triangle, two triangle, or even no triangle possible when they're giving you side-side angle. And so the first thing I want to show you is when you have an obtuse triangle, the main thing you want to pay attention to is like, say if they give you this side, they give you this side, and they give you this angle right here, okay? And what you want to do is you want to make sure that the side that's across from that angle when it's obtuse is the longest side. If this side here is longer than this side here, then what happens is if you were to really draw it accurately, it would look something like this where it doesn't actually form a triangle and there's no triangle possible. Now, when you do the law of sines down here, what you'll find is that you actually get an error message on your calculator when there's no triangle possible. But just so that you can save yourself a step, if this is longer and this is shorter and it's across from the obtuse angle like that, there's no triangle. Now, what happens if this is the longest side across from the obtuse angle? Well, then you just have one triangle. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Now, what happens when you have like an angle over here that's not, uh, I'm going to use this a lowercase a, meaning it's an acute angle, it's not obtuse, and they give you this side here that's adjacent to the acute angle and the side that's across from the acute angle. Well, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to drop a perpendicular, they call this the altitude or the height, okay, to this other side like this, and what we're going to do is we're going to analyze whether there's one, two, or no triangles. Now, if this side here that's across from the acute angle, if this side is longer than this side adjacent, then there's only going to be one triangle possible. And the way to look at it is like this. We don't know what this angle is up here, right? So we could think of this as like a hinge. If we were to like take this whole side here and like rotate it, if I was to rotate this, it would actually extend past this, this side right here. And so there's really no triangle possible. Now, what happens if this side right here is in between the length of the altitude and the length of the adjacent side. Well, then what happens, that's more like this triangle down here, what we can actually do is we can rotate it like so, so we actually get two possible triangles. So you can kind of think of this as like the radius of a circle and you're rotating that. It's gonna intersect this side here opposite uh, in two different locations, so you can have two triangles possible. And that's what we're gonna look at in this video. But what happens if this side right here is exactly the same length as this altitude? Well, if it's exactly the same length, what that means is that this is actually going to be a right triangle. Okay, so there's only one triangle possible. And then what happens if, um, let's see, what happens if this side right here is actually shorter than the altitude? So if I was to draw that more accurately like this, see, even if we try to rotate it, what happens is it's not going to be long enough to reach that opposite side and then there's no triangle possible. Of course, when you do the law of sines, you're going to get an error message, but just so you know, that's what's happening is you actually can't form a triangle in that case. So let's go ahead and look at this one. So what we're going to do first is we're going to drop that altitude like so. I'm going to call that H. And if we cover up this side of the triangle, we have a right triangle here. We can use our regular sine cosine tangent to solve for the height. The sine of 30 equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So let's just write that over here. Sine 30 uh, equals opposite over hypotenuse. Now if I multiply both sides by 12, uh, that cancels. And then I know the sine of 30 is a half, or you can do this on your calculator, times 12 is 6. Okay, so we know now that the height equals 6. But notice how this side across from the acute angle, the 12, is in between the altitude and the side adjacent, which means that we can rotate it like so. Okay, so I'm just taking that and I'm turning it. So we could get a triangle that looks like this. Let's go ahead and redraw it. It looks something like that. Or it would just look like the original triangle, something like that. So let's go ahead and write down what we have here. We have 30 degrees, uh, angle A, we have B, we have C, we have 20, we have 12. Same thing over here, A, 30 degrees, 20, uh, 12. And this is C and this is B. And that's it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start off by solving for this angle right here, angle C. And so the reason I'm doing that is because when you do the law of sines, you've got the sine of the angle over the side opposite, sine of the angle over the side opposite. The ones across from each other, they form like a pair and we can make a proportion. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got sine of 30 degrees over 12 equals sine of angle C over its side opposite, which is 20. If I multiply both sides by 20, We've got sine of C equals this quantity, and I'm going to take the sine inverse to solve for angle C. So let's go to the calculator. Make sure you're in degree mode. 
and we've got, check my work on this, 20 times the sine of 30 divided by 12, and I'm going to take the sine inverse of that answer, and I'm getting 56.4. I'm just going to round to the nearest tenth. So this is 56.4. Now here's where students get a little bit confused uh, about the second triangle. You see how I rotated this like this? That means that this side right here is 12 as well. And so what do you have when you have a triangle that has two sides that are congruent? Well, that's an isosceles triangle. And what do we know about the base angles of an isosceles triangle? Well, they're congruent. So if this is 56.4, this is 56.4, but you see this angle right here next to it, see how these form a linear pair? That means that this angle is 180 minus 56.4, which is how much? It's 123.6, right? So when I go down to this triangle right here, I'm going to put in our 123.6 degrees. Now what we have is we have two angles in a triangle. We can solve for the third angle by adding those up and subtracting from 180. So let's go ahead and do that. So 30 plus 56.4. Okay, and let's do that again. 30 plus 56.4. I'm going to take away from 180. So that comes out to 93.6 for angle B. And over here, same thing. We've got 30 plus 123.6. Take that from 180 and we're getting 26.4 degrees. Okay, now all we have left to do is solve for this side here across from angle B, side B. Same thing over here in this triangle. You're going to want to do two separate law of sines to solve because the two triangles are separate. So let's go to do this one here first. We've got a sine of 30 over 12. And I like to go back to the original numbers if at all possible, just so I don't, you know, if I made a mistake here or if I rounded a little bit, I don't want to carry forth that rounding error. So let's go sine of uh, 93.6, all divided by uh, this side here, I'll just call D. So let's go ahead and uh, multiply both, uh, let's cross multiply. So we've got uh, B times the sine of 30 equals 12 times the sine of 93.6, divide both sides by sine of 30. Okay, keep that balanced. And then now what I'm going to do is solve for B. So we've got 12 sine of 93.6. Uh, divided by sine of 30. And so that comes out to about 23, well, it's actually about 24.0 if we rounded the nearest tenth. So that's uh, 24.0. Over here in this triangle, same thing. We're going to do sine of 30 over 12, going back to those original values, equals sine of 26.4 over side B. Again, I'm going to cross multiply uh, just to get rid of the fractions here using the means extremes property as it's called and then let's divide both sides by sine of 30 because we want to get b by itself and let's see what does that come out to so 12 sine of 26.4 check my work on this uh, divided by sine of 30 I'm getting 10.7 so that's this over here is 10.7 and you can see you saw both triangles we had uh, two measures for angle C, we had two measures for angle B, we had two uh, lengths for side B, and you got it. If you want to see more about the law of cosines and how to work with the law of cosines, follow me over to that video right there where we dive into some more examples.